the meaning of quantum physics uh, is really in terms of giving us a new worldview that shows clearly how consciousness can be and is the ground of our being. In other words, quantum physics enables us to uh, see directly that we can make sense of the world only if we base the world on consciousness. World is made of consciousness, world is consciousness, consciousness is the ground of being. Qu quantum physics makes this as clear as daylight. How is quantum physics clear as day? Because quantum physics says, shows you clearly that science, quantum mathematics, which is, in our belief, the most fundamental mathematics, most accurate mathematical description of nature that uh, we have discovered. Uh, this mathematics shows us clearly that the movement of objects are describable only in terms of possibilities, not the actual events that happens in our experience. Quantum physics calculates only possibilities. But if we accept this, then the question immediately comes, who, what chooses among these possibilities to bring the actual event of experience? So we directly, immediately see that consciousness must be involved. The observer cannot be ignored. Observer is part of the description of the world. But the observer is not included in quantum physics. We can only describe the objects, not the subject. So we get the idea that the subject must be more fundamental than the objects. Consciousness is more fundamental. Consciousness must be the ground of being of which objects are part, but not all of it. And these objects then are, can be described as waves of possibility, and quantum physics succeeds in giving this description very accurately and gives probabilities so that we can do science on the basis of it whenever there is a large number of objects and large number of events. But when you speak of individual objects and individual events, then this very intriguing choice, the word choice by consciousness out of these possible events, the actual event of experience comes in. And so for the first time, science encounters free will. Consciousness is free because there is no mathematical description of the subject in our science. Only objects can be described mathematically and only to the extent that there are possibilities. The question still remains paramount, who is the chooser? And when we see that, then we see that the chooser is free. There is freedom of choice. And of that freedom of choice comes our actual experience. Those are the discontinuous experiences that I was telling you about. Now, of course, we get conditioned, and then the certain apparent continuity reigns and that's what misleads us, that's what con confuses us. The conditioning confuses us. The conditioning brings up an apparent continuity in our experience. So how does that translate the, the, the observer and consciousness? What is the, how does in quantum physics and, and the, the understanding of how the, the world it works, how does that translate down to me? That's, it. that's of course, is the ultimate of the issue. What, what does all this observer or collapse of possibility wave, as the physicist would say, into an actual event of experience. From that, how do we get to me? Now that me, as I said, is a result of a lot of conditioning. So although, ideally, in every experience, we get a whole bunch of possible responses. But in uh, what happens because of our memory, quantum measurement, every observation can be looked upon as a quantum measurement, this quantum measurement produces brain memory. These brain memories are activated every time we encounter an experience uh, again. A repeated, ex repeated stimulus will always elicit not only the original impression, but also this repetition of memory impressions. And it is this working of the memory, I sometimes put it this way, we always perceive something after reflection in the mirror of memory. It is this reflection in the mirror of memory that gives us that sense of I-ness, who I am, namely 
a pattern of habits, a pattern of uh, memories, a pattern of past, and that is where I enter the picture. All of our meanings of who I am come from this reflection on the mirror of memory. So we miss the quantum discontinuity. And because we miss it, that's why we ask, well, but that is not me. Because quantum is talking about discontinuous quantum leaps, possibilities and probabilities, free will. But we find in our ordinary me, all these things are quite elusive. The illusion will be cleared up only when we are prepared to work a little. We have to work our way back to this freedom, to this consciousness as the holder of the freedom of choice. If we work our way back, then this question that you asked, how does it relate to me, will become clearer and clearer. So I'm wondering, like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? You know, <laughs> then did where, did consciousness come first, or did, where did consciousness come from? I don't even really answer that question. But the consciousness <laughs> is the ground of being. Therefore, it is the one and the original. The chicken and the egg question, however, is very important. Uh, for example, how does this one consciousness become a subject-object split experience? There, when we analyze it fully. And uh, here I must mention Doug Hopstetter's book, uh, Godel Escher Bach, where there is a good analysis of this question. And we find indeed that how consciousness becomes split into a subject of experience and an object which is subject experiences, how this split occurs. This has to do with what we call a chicken and egg kind of hierarchy which uh, technically Hofstadter calls tangled hierarchy. This hierarchical tangle is inherently present in a quantum measurement. Quantum measurement is not a simple hierarchical process. Instead, it's a tangled hierarchical process involving the object, involving the brain, involving how we experience the world. So because the quantum measurement involving the brain is tangled hierarchical, this, this chicken and the egg kind of, chicken or the egg which came first kind of hierarchy, we cannot really decide it. There is no decision. They're, they both are as important in the hierarchy. When we realize that, then we can understand how our self-reference arises this subject-object split arises from a quantum measurement. It's a little bit uh, like the uh, picture of drawing hands by M.C. Escher. You might have seen it. The left hand draws the right, and the right hand draws the left. But who is really drawing them 